It is winter, the time for stories. The Blackfeet people tell many stories about many people, places, and things, but no story is more sacred or important than the story of Scarface. His courageous journey to the land of the sun, his bravery, and his return to earth provide sacred lessons for the Blackfeet people. Listen, for now comes one of the many stories told of Scarface. Ke pai ninna e pasua. Once there lived a girl who was kind and beautiful. Many young men wanted to marry her, but one by one she turned them away. This concerned her mother and father, and they asked, Why will you not marry any of these young men? They are fine young men. The girl explained that Natusi's son had once visited her and told her she could not marry anyone, for she belonged only to him. Her parents accepted her explanation, and no more was said to her. Even so, young men still asked to marry. Now in that same place lived a young man whose body was strong and pleasing. He would have been handsome were it not for a terrible scar on his face. His name was Pai, Scarface. Scarface was an orphan. Having no one, he grew up going from one family to another for food and clothing. But all his life he cried, for always there were people who laughed at him and made fun of his scarred face and the fact that he was pitiful. One day the young men in the camp were making fun of him and one said, Scarface, the girl has refused to marry us, but you are so handsome. You should ask her to marry you. And since you are so rich, said another, she will certainly choose to marry you. And then they all laughed. Scarface went off by himself. He had seen the girl many times, and he had come to love her. He decided to go to the girl, profess his love, and ask her to marry him. He found the girl standing by a stream. I am Scarface, he said. I am poor and ugly, but I am a good person. I love you and I want to marry you. And to his amazement, the girl said, I care not if you are poor, I will marry you. But first you must go to Sun and ask permission to marry me. Ask Sun to remove your scar as a sign that we truly have his blessing. Scarface thought to himself, I know not where Sun lives. His lodge is surely far away. I fear I won't be able to find it. But he gathered his courage and went to a kind old woman who had befriended him and said, I must find my way to the lodge of the sun. I don't know where I am going and I will be gone a long time. The old woman made moccasins, clothes and packed food for him and when all was prepared, Scarface began his journey. He traveled over prairies, valleys, and high snow-covered mountains. Once he was afraid and lonely, often he prayed. Wolf and bear and badger helped him along his way, but still he could not find the Lodge of the Sun. In time, his clothes and his moccasins were badly worn and he was without food. Just as he was about to give up his search, he came to a large body of water. Water which seemed to go on forever. It was then that Wolverine appeared before Scarface and whispered, Sun's house is on the other side of the water. Wolverine left as quickly as he had appeared. I cannot get across all this water, thought Scarface. I have failed. I cannot reach the Lodge of the Sun, and I am too far away to return to my people. I will die in this place. 
Just then, two white swans appeared and spoke to him. We will take you to the Lodge of the Sun. Lie down on our backs. Scarface settled himself upon the backs of the swans, and they swam him across the deep water, filled with strange creatures and sea monsters. Upon reaching the sun's land, he saw a handsome young man standing near the water's edge. Scarface waved to him, saying, I am Scarface, and I am looking for the Lodge of the Sun. I am Ipasuwat, Morning Star. Sun is my father, said the young man. I will take you to his lodge. When they entered the lodge, Morning Star's mother, Kokomikisum, Moon, welcomed Scarface and gave him food. She learned that Scarface had come to ask permission to marry the girl he loved. That night when Sun returned home, he too welcomed Scarface and invited him to live with them for as long as he wished. Soon after, Morning Star and Scarface went out hunting when they reached a place where there lived seven evil birds. The giant birds attacked Morning Star, but Scarface killed each one of the birds and gave their bodies to Sun and Moon. We must repay Scarface for saving our son's life, said Moon. Sun then gave permission to Scarface to wed the girl. Then in an instant, Sun removed the mark that Scarface had worn since birth. Sun then told Scarface to tell the Blackfeet people to hold a special ceremony that would cleanse and heal the bodies and hearts of the people. Sun instructed Scarface in the ways of the healing sweat lodge. Scarface learned the special prayers and songs for the ceremony, which is held to this day. Sun and Moon showed Scarface the sparkling wolf trail, the trail in the sky that some people called the Milky Way. It was on the wolf trail that Scarface returned to the earth and to his people. Scarface married the girl he loved, and years later, they returned to the sky to live there forever. Sun changed Scarface into a beautiful, sparkling star, much like his father, Morning Star. At certain times before the sun rises, they are seen rising together, beautiful and sparkling in the eastern dawn. Sometimes Scarface is seen before his father, Morning Star, rises. And then he is called by his sometime name, which is mistaken Morning Star. There are more stories about Scarface, but the time for this story is over. Morning Star is the bright planet Venus. Although the story does not say so, we know from the traditions of the Blackfeet people, Scarface is the planet Mars. Sun and Moon are the father and mother of Morning Star. And it was they who showed their grandson, Scarface, a shortcut back to his earthly home. That path is known by Blackfeet people as the Wolf Trail. You may know that trail of sparkling stars as the Milky Way. We wonder about these sky beings and sky places. We ask, how did they come to be? The answer is simple. Everything in our solar system family comes from our star, the sun. That is, everything was born of the stuff left over from the sun's birth. And the Milky Way? Well, it was made billions of years before our sun was born. When we ask scientists how all these sky objects came to be, the story gets a little complex, so hold on as we take a quick trip through our solar system. People often think of space as empty, but here and there, floating among the stars, are great clouds made mostly of hydrogen gas and particles of dust. It was from one of those star clouds that our sun our solar system and all that exists in our solar system family came to be. 
Our star cloud was so large it collapsed under its own weight. Gravity pulled the atoms of the cloud together in the center, and in time the matter in the cloud began to spin and formed into a sphere and became our own star, the sun. The cloud was so large that there were leftover gases and stardust that flattened out and began to revolve around the newborn sun. In order to understand more, we need to know an important word used by astronomers. The word is accretion. Accretion is a process that lets some things grow slowly in layers by adding to the original object. You know this already. If you've ever made a snowman, you started with a small amount of snow. You stuck more snow onto the surface of the first snowball to make it larger. You could say the small snowball grew through accretion. Through accretion, our original star cloud formed into our sun and into great cloud rings around the sun. After that, it took from a few hundred thousand years to 10 million years for the process of accretion to form the rings into spheres that we now call planets. Starting in the center of it all is the most powerful sky being in our family, the sun. Then come the planets, First out from the sun is, and you can say them with me, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, an area called the asteroid belt where there are all sizes of space rocks from pebbles to some boulders as big as a house. Then Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And though it isn't considered a planet any longer, way out in space is Pluto, who is still a member of our solar system family. And way, way out, millions and millions of miles into space, circling around the sun, is where the comets live. For a moment, let's go back to the planet Mars. This is an important planet in our story because the Blackfeet people say that Scarface is the planet Mars. When we see Mars in the night sky, we notice that it's reddish in color. That's because Mars contains a lot of iron, so the surface is red. We have iron here on Earth, and whenever you see places where the dirt is red, you can know the dirt contains iron oxide, rust, which gives it its red color. Now, if we take a close look at the surface of Mars, we see something amazing. The planet Mars, like Scarface, has a great scar. This scar or formation is a great valley that was caused by giant Mars quakes. Its name is Mariner Valley. It is four miles deep, more than a hundred miles wide, and almost 3,000 miles long. To get an idea of its size, Mariner Valley would stretch almost all the way from New York to California. Back in the beginning of our solar system, there were hundreds of objects, smaller than planets, called planetesimals. Through accretion, these planetesimals collided with one another and over billions of years, our solar system ended up with just the eight planets we know. Even so, our solar system still has numerous objects the size of Pluto, plus more than 150 moons. Thinking of our solar system as a family is a good way to remember their names learn how they differ from one another, and just get to know them. But there is yet a larger family that we are a part of. 
Remember the wolf trail? The Milky Way? The shortcut back to the Earth that Sun and Moon told Scarface to take? That part of the night sky we see as a thin band of light reaching from one horizon to the other? In ancient times, many people called it a sky path or a sky river. It looks like a path or a trail or a stream. But for many years, scientists have known that we are looking through space at billions of stars that make up our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy. If we could travel into deep space and look back at our Milky Way, we would see that our sun is just one of billions of stars swirling around in space. Our Milky Way galaxy has great arms that spiral out from its center, much like a hurricane. It is known as a spiral galaxy. Astronomers have determined that our sun is located closer to the edge of our galaxy than the center, so we would be right about here. Galaxies come in different sizes and shapes. All stars live in galaxies and groups of galaxies, which are spread out all over the universe. We can think of these galaxies as families of stars. Scientists have learned that other stars in our Milky Way galaxy have planets, as does our sun. Perhaps they too have life. Right now, scientists are searching to see if life exists on some of these other worlds. The story of Scarface is a story of a hero and his sky family. The Blackfeet people, through their stories, remind us that we are all a family. All. All of us belong to our Earth and sky family. <laughs>